to Wood Turner's journal. Um, today I'm gonna I'm doing a project, um, and I'll tell you I'll, I'll tell you why I'm doing it. Uh, lately, I've been working on a video and a project for everybody. And if you uh, follow me and watch my videos on a regular basis, you know that I like to um, do things that I've never done before and push myself and. Um, I, I, I like to look at a lot of like objects around me and things around me and, and things people do and I like to figure out how would you do that out of wood, how would you turn that. Um, so lately, for the past uh, month I would say, I've been working on this teapot. Now, I do have a video coming for it, but um, everything I'm doing at the, this point now uh, I'm not liking or it's not working the way that I want it to. Um, I hand carved this, this handle for it. I even attached it and I thought, oh, and then as I started looking at it, I'm like, you know what, this is such a beautiful piece. This handle does not match uh, the, the tea uh, kettle. So I thought of another idea. I thought, hey, I'm going to, I've never done it before. I'm going to steam wood and I'm going to bend it and I wanted a curl effect. And so I turned a piece of mesquite and I uh, boiled it for an hour and then I set up a jig and I was going to turn it and I don't know if any of you have ever worked with mesquite. Mesquite's very hard wood. It did not want to bend. It was bending a little bit and then it just snapped. Um, so this didn't work. So now I need to sit here and rethink uh, how I'm going to do a handle, a handle that would fit the design for the tea kettle, uh, but I don't have anything right now and I want to turn something and I want to keep on working on a project. So um, I'm putting this to the side and today um, to kind of, since nothing's been working out, I'm going to go back to something that I, I know I could do and I, I've only done uh, one, um, well I guess I've done a couple, but one in this style, I'm, I'm going to turn a box. Um, we're going to do it, I'm going to uh, do it differently, I feel, than how I did it in the past. I think in the past um, I may have used uh, some carbide chisels or something, but I am not a big fan of carbide chisels. So we're going to do this entirely just with your standard chisels and, uh, and go from there. I have it mounted uh, up, I'm using my face plate, and just so uh, it's mesquite once again, and uh, I've been using a lot of mesquite because I live in the desert and that's what I could kind of get out here for free. So um, it's kind of rare nowadays that I have anything else. Sometimes I come across other stuff. Um, sometimes people send me uh, uh, some cool wood, uh, but I haven't gotten anything in a while, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the mesquite, and I think mesquite's beautiful, as you can tell. This is mesquite, and I think it's absolutely beautiful wood. So we'll make it out of that. So uh, let's uh, let's get turning this. So I added a little bit of CA glue there uh, just because I see some cracks uh, in the wood and I want to make sure that they don't continue and, and uh, it kind of holds together. I'll probably have to do a little bit of filler, which I, uh, on the mesquite I've been using uh, coffee grounds, old coffee grounds that I dry out and it seems to blend and uh, fill pretty nice. It looks like uh, it's part of the wood. So we'll probably end up doing that. I'm going to smooth this out a bit using my bowl scraper. Uh, and I'm not sure 
how I want to do this yet. Um, I think the, the pattern on this wood is beautiful. I don't even know if I want to uh, do any any kind of coves or beads or anything. I may make this a simple smooth box. Um, I think that is what I'm going to do. Let me let me smooth this out and then I'll probably uh, uh, sand it and then uh, we'll hollow out this end. We'll have to make a lid. Before I go any further, uh, I, I, I know I'm going to have to fill some of this, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I basically... throw it on my board. Work that in there. Take a little CA glue. Let it soak in. Add a little more. These ones right here, if you could see them, they may be okay. I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. Actually, may rub. I'm going to take my sanding disc to it. I think I'm going to use, um, what do I have here? I'm going to use a rougher one. I'm going to use uh, 100 on there just to knock down some of these, these edges and get rid of uh, the coffee grounds that have stuck that aren't flush with it. Get rid of this uh, tear out and then, uh, then we're going to hollow it out. I think I'm going to do almost an egg shape or so to this. It's going to be nice and smooth all the way around. Um, I think that's the way to do it. So let me uh, let me go ahead and start shaping, and I'll sand. All right, there's still just a little bit. I think I, uh, some of this tear out is so deep right here that uh, I may have to fill that as well. Um, but I may, uh, I'm going to start blending it. So rather than continue to sand, I just wanted to make sure I got all that crack filled. And uh, here's another little minor one. Uh, we'll see, but I'm going to start blending right now and kind of making the cone that I want. getting my uh, gloves on. This is extremely hot coming off of here. Please don't write me and tell me not to wear gloves. Um, I'm going to. Uh, doesn't matter. If you don't like wearing gloves, don't wear them. And I understand everyone else's concern with uh, them getting caught and everything else. Uh, but actually, they do sell um, wood turners gloves. And it's uh, okay. You, I mean, you do have to keep in mind that you're wearing them and, and, and try to keep it away. But trust me, when you have uh, the shavings coming off burning hot and they're hitting your hand, and this is such a hard wood, it gives off a lot of heat to cut it, uh, it makes a huge difference. So I wear them 
And if you don't want to wear them, by all means, don't wear them. I don't recommend wearing them. I don't think with any other power tool, definitely not band saws, definitely not table saws. That's when, uh, if you get caught, it does grab and pull it in. Um, and I'm not saying that it can't happen with this, uh, but I'm aware of it. And um, I guess what I'm saying is I don't really care. Uh, I, my lathe isn't big enough anyways, and it was uh, to, oh, I could stop this thing from spinning immediately. And also, uh, as long as your gloves are really tight on your skin, it makes it a little bit more difficult to, uh, to pull you in. So I'm going to go ahead and wear my gloves. I'm going to get them on right now. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to um, fill some more cracks here. Um, just some deep uh, pockets, it looks like. And then I'm gonna uh, switch, rather than continuing with the uh, 100, I'm gonna switch to 220 because uh, it is pretty smooth. Um, I got some fine cuts on there and I don't, I don't need such a high grit. So go ahead, fill that in really fast. Okay, that looks pretty good. I do have a minor crack here that I'm, I'm gonna need to fill the same way I've been filling it with the coffee. So I'm gonna do that really fast and then just take um, probably uh, my skew or and uh, just use it as a scraper just really finely on the bottom to take off the extra coffee grounds. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do that. All right, so. I sanded the bottom uh, piece and I've applied a couple uh, coats of tongue oil. Um, I'm probably a little bit early on that um, because I may have to, when this lid goes on, it may not be lined up exactly correct. Um, so I may need to trim a little bit more off the, the bottom of the box, but uh, I'm pretty close and I just kind of wanted to start getting the tongue oil uh, seeping into the grains. So it's all right even if I have to take off a little bit, shave it down just so the, the two of them match. Now, if you're watching at home, you're probably wondering, okay, well now how is he going to hollow out the lid part? And it's simple. Um, I'm going to kind of make a jam chuck uh, here and I'm gonna use uh, hot glue and I don't really have to um, it's, it's not going to be that hard and aggressive of a cut to hollow this out. Um, but the, the key part is I'm taking this, this just a scrap piece of 4x4 that I have, um, nothing nice, and then I'm going to square this off and I'm going to basically make an angle. 
to match this angle where it would sit kind of nice in there and then we'll hot glue it in and then from there we'll start hollowing it out. Uh, I'll probably put up my tail stock in the beginning and then you know just to make sure I'm squared up and, and then we'll we'll go from there. So first things first I want to square this this piece up. I'm actually going to use I'm going to use my my bowl gouge. Here we are. I'm, I was able to square it up. I'm using, I'll show you the tail stock I'm using. I have to take it off anyways. Um, and I'm, I'm using this guy that I have um, because it's flat right here and it will naturally square this thing up on this. Now, I need to kind of move quick. I have my hot glue gun ready. And I want to put plenty of hot glue on this to make sure that it doesn't come out. The more hot glue, the better. Get it in there and then start pressing it. It's going to square up on me. Now, I could also pipe it in the sides here. For what I'm doing and how light this wood and this piece is, this should be plenty. Just to be safe though, I will wear a face shield Give that a few minutes. It looks like we're nice and square though. Exactly where it should be. All right, I think we're about dry. To start off, I'm gonna start just kind of curving this. Um, I need to make a lip so it goes in correctly, but I'm gonna start before I do that, hollowing some of this out. want to get this closer to what this box is. I have that little tiny lip on here and that's all I need for it to go in. So I'm going to take off a little bit more off of here because I could just tell from looking at it it's too thick. Try this. Ooh, I'm almost there. Literally just a hair more. Perfect. That's nice and snug. Alright. Now it's time to just blend this a little bit. Take out that center part. And 
nice and easy. I am not pushing. I'm letting the blade do all the work. Yeah, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna sand it. I'm gonna sand the inside really fast and then tongue oil it. And then, um, then when we come back around, we'll be, uh, when I'm done with that, we'll, we'll finish it up. All right, well, so far, in the project. Um, I basically sanded everything down. Um, I sand everything down to 600 grit. Some people tell me that I don't need to. Um, I do it anyways. Um, I take comfort in it knowing that I uh, sanded it down that much um, and I got out any little tiny scratch that there may be. And then I went ahead and this is all tongue oil on here. The shine that I'm getting this is all from tongue oil. I didn't use anything else other than I put six coats of tongue oil. And what I did was um, I would apply the tongue oil and I'd let it sit overnight. And then I would, um, I started with, sometimes it says to start with 200. I only did that once on the lid. I saw some bumps from the tongue oil um, that sometimes tongue oil gets sucked into the wood and then as it's drying some of it starts coming out and i think that's what happened so i used that a little bit on the lid but from there um i was using 400 grit sandpaper and i put six coats and my last coat which i did yesterday um i used 600 just to buff out the, the tongue oil really nice and smooth and then i applied one more coat then from there, I put it on my uh, on the buffer, um, and I buffed it and then waxed it, and this is where we are. It was shining like this already with the tongue oil, um, but you know it it is now absolutely smooth to the touch. It feels amazing. So um, now we still have this bottom to deal with, and I have the bottom of here. So you don't have to write me, I already know. I did this one, I said I was gonna do it differently than the last one. And I used the faceplate on this side. Now I drilled little holes in here, but I knew the whole time what I wanted to do, it didn't really make a difference to me because um, they're all filled, but the bottom I'm actually going to put felt in the bottom so it's nice and padded, um, and then you could put jewelry and things like that in there without worrying about them scratching. And then I'm gonna put felt, felt on this bottom too. Um, but before we do that, I need to put it back on the lathe and just square this up and take off this bottom part. So, we'll so I wanna show you, I, I think I talked about this in another video that I did, but I put down just a little bit of painter's tape because once again, this is finished. So I don't want to scratch it up any. So I'm, I'm gonna basically, I put down the painter's tape just to give it a little bit more protection. I'm not worried about these. These are really, um, the, it's rubber. So uh, I don't really worry that that's gonna do anything to it. Um, and I'm gonna use my tail stock on this in the beginning. Uh, get this going. I need to be careful, I'm gonna take this out. And I have to be real gentle with this. Use my bowl scraper. You have to be careful to keep this you know, you want to do 
the edge, but you don't want to roll over the edge. That looks good. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's being covered with felt. So I got this felt at a fabric store. You could, you could buy it by the yard there. And I just cut off a little section. And I'm using this highlighter because I found it shows up on this. Now I want to cut this out as nicely as I can. See how I did. Oh, that looks good. I did a good job on that. All right. Now it's time to glue it up. All right, I'm going to use five minute epoxy. Um, I do not need a lot. Come straight out with it. Don't brush back and forth by the edges because you will risk hitting the side. Just gonna hold it for a minute or so. And it should be set up in just a few minutes. Just a little weight on it. I'll let it sit there just for five minutes or so and it'll be done and then we'll do the inside. All right, it's dry. Um, it's probably been drying for about an hour or so and it came out pretty good. I think it could be better. Um, there's just a little bit over and so because of that, I went online, looked up a fabric circle cutter. I've never used one of these before, um, but it, uh, I went and ran to a fabric store, picked it up, and we'll see how it goes. I've already measured uh, the diameter of this, and then I figured out what it should be. Hopefully I'm correct. I kind of eyeballed it up to make sure that it was center as well. Let's see how this works. Tape down the piece of material. Pretty nice circle. That looks pretty good. Now we gotta glue it down in there. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Five minutes. All right, there it is, it's complete. Uh, completely polished up. The felt is uh, dry, dry on both sides. It's ready for anyone to put their jewelry inside of it. Um, I'm really happy with the way this one uh, came out. I love tongue oil and I use it in my finishes a lot, but rarely anymore do I do just pure tongue oil finishes. And that's what this one is. And I, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, I, I, I'm really happy with the way this came out and uh, it's mesquite. If you have access to any mesquite, um, I don't think people realize what a beautiful wood it, uh, that it is. And if you could get it, I definitely recommend, uh, you know, turning something out of it or making it. It is absolutely beautiful. It uh, reminds me of black walnut. Um, just a beautiful look to it. Um, I want to thank you for watching. Um, and once again, I want to thank all my subscribers, uh, everyone who subscribes to me. I really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, I, uh, I keep on coming up with new things and, uh, you know, I'm not done with this project. Look out for this video with uh, the tea kettle. I will definitely be finishing this. Um, I just need to do something that, you know, basically get my pride back up uh, to 
prove to myself that I knew what I was doing again. Um, you know, this is a challenging project and I, and I have a vision of, of what I want done with it. Um, but until I figure it out how to do it, um, you know, it, it's going to be a while, but hopefully this is my video coming out pretty soon. Um, and I have to say this fabric circle cutter, never used one before in my life. And if you felt a lot of your bottoms to your projects, uh, I, I recommend getting one of these. It, it actually made it a lot easier. Um, definitely tape down the material. I tried to do it before without taping it down and it moves on you and you don't get such a fine cut. But this thing um, is, is definitely helps a ton. Um, I went and got it at a fabric store here in town. I think I overpaid for it, but I wanted it right now. Um, I'll put a link, I'll find one um, online and I'll put a link uh, below uh, to make it easier for you if you, uh, if you don't have to have it immediately. Um, but it, it's a great tool to have, um, but I'm pretty sure I overpaid for it. Um, and uh, I just want to remind everybody that uh, it, it's definitely grown in size. Uh, the Facebook page, Wood Turner's Journal Facebook page, it's a great group. Uh, we're over 400 some members uh, there that uh, all Wood Turners, people showing off their work, everyone helping each other, giving each other ideas. It's a great group. Um, I recommend it. Um, even if you are just beginning or you, um, you know, you're an expert at wood turning, we appreciate uh, everyone in the group. You know, uh, like I said, everyone helps each other. It's, a, it's just a great little community, um, you know, just to share uh, projects that you're working on or share your thoughts on, on how to do stuff. And, um, and that's basically it. I, I, I just want to thank everyone for subscribing. If uh, you're not one of my subscribers, you know, uh, go ahead, subscribe. I keep on coming up with uh, new uh, ideas and, um, and I'm not done. I, I have a lot of uh, ideas. It's more I need time than uh, ideas because I have probably a thousand ideas of, of stuff I've never seen anyone else do that I want to do um, or things that I want to touch on. Um, you know, in my group, I, I see people asking the same questions over and so I try to make videos on touching on those type of things uh, that I think would help people. So, um, you know, please subscribe. I appreciate it. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Until next time.